I've been waiting to play this series for six months and it's finally here. The WPT Championship is finally here, you guys, and it's hosted by my favorite casino, The Win. So we've got the best staff, we've got the best run tournament tour all around the world, in my personal opinion, combining forces to make what some people are calling the Winter World Series happen. I'm headed down to play the first tournament of the series when I notice a ton of commotion up in the poker room. There's cameras everywhere, lights everywhere, people running around all over the place. And I realize that the meetup game, they've kicked things off with an ambassador meetup game at the Win Poker Room. The place is packed, the lists are full, and I see Phil Ivy playing 1-3. Then over to my left, I see Doyle Brunson, his infamous cowboy hat, the godfather of poker. This guy's been playing poker for a million years. And to my left, another godfather of sorts. It's Mr. Andrew Nimi, the godfather of vlogging, who must be so excited that the meetup game concept has turned into this. I'll be checking in on those guys playing the meetup game shortly, but for now, I'm headed over to my tournament table where the buy-in is $600 with a $500,000 guarantee. This thing is gonna be huge. So I sit down with 25,000 chips and I'm ready to get into the hands kick things off with pocket sevens in the cutoff at the 100, 200 level. We're here on time, you guys. So I raise it up to 600 and both blinds come along. The flop is ace, six, four. Small blind checks it over to the big blind who almost instantaneously leads for 1200 into a 2K pot. This is not a play that you see a lot of professional players make. One thing that this tells me is that my opponent in the big blind is more on the recreational side, most likely. But with pocket sevens, I'm beating a six, I'm beating a four, which is sometimes what amateurs will lead with on this type of board texture. But I'm gonna keep them honest by flicking in the call. Small blind gets out of there, so it's just the two of us to see the king of diamonds on the turn. My opponent does not slow down. Instead, he puts all the rest of his chips in the middle. That's 10,000 chips into a pot of 4,400. So while he didn't have me completely convinced on the flop, this turn bet will certainly do it. All right, nice hand. I toss my hand into the muck and move on to the next one. In this one, I open king queen offsuit in the low jack and get three callers. So four ways we see the king 10 eight flop checks to me. And obviously with the top pair, I wanna start with a bet. Four ways though, like you guys know, I always size it down a little bit just to keep things a little balanced. So I bet 1100 and everyone calls, not one fold. Welcome to the $600 tournament. The turn is the five of clubs. Once both blinds check to me again, I wanna slow down with the check only for deception. I think that if I get called in three places with a lot of different bluffs that I have on the flop, I'm definitely gonna be giving up on the turn. So I wanna be doing that here when I actually have a hand that can call somebody's bluff on the river. I know I'm playing with fire a little bit with draws that could be out there or with worse pairs that could two pair up on the river, but that's what I was thinking in game. In the future, I should probably just throw all that balance talk out the window and continue betting on the turn. The cutoff also checks back. So all four of us family pot to the river, which comes the seven of hearts. Both blinds check to me once again. Now I'm gonna go for value, obviously. So I put in 3,500. I think that'll do the job. Maybe getting called by a 10. The cutoff folds, small blind, snap calls, the big blind's out of there. And once I show my hand, it is good. I think my opponent flashed me a, another king as well, but I couldn't quite see. But either way, it's nice to take one down. And I feel like I'm starting to get a handle on how my opponents at this table are playing. It takes quite a few levels before a vloggable hand comes into play. In this one, we open ace jack off under the gun one and get three collars once again. Family pots are all the rage at the beginning of these tournaments. Anyway, four ways, the flop is ace jack five, two diamonds, Bink, we get top two pair. Both blinds check to me and you guys know the drill. Big family pot means we go smaller. It gives you a good price on your bluffs and when you're going for value, it gives you a little bit of deception. So I put in 2,500 chips into an 8,800 chip pot. Under the gun two folds, small blind calls and the big blind folds. The turn is 
the Ace of Clubs. So we boat up on the turn. We've got absolutely nothing to worry about. And when my opponent checks to me, I just need to decide on what size I want to go. With 14,000 in the pot and about 18K behind, I'm the shorter stack of the two, I decide on a sizing of 5,000. It's small enough that I can maybe get called by draws still or a jack, obviously an ace if he has it. So that's what I decide. I put in a 5K chip. He thinks for 25 seconds this time, which is kind of a timing test for me that I want to pay attention to from him because he didn't take long on the flop and now he's taking almost a full 30 seconds. And for such a small sizing, to me, that seems like he's pretty weak or he was deciding to raise. I'm not sure which one yet. Either way, he makes the call and we both see the 10 of hearts on the turn. He checks once again, and we're gonna empty the clip. We put all of our chips in the middle, 13,300 to be exact, and doesn't take too long before he puts in the call. We know we're good. I flip over my hand and he shows us ace six of spades. So that long tank on the turn must have been him thinking about whether he should go all in or call or what, but obviously he was never folding with trips. Now all of a sudden we're up an entire starting stack. So sometimes pays off to be a little bit patient, and uh, oh yeah, just having the nuts. It's also nice. Okay, our momentum continues only five minutes later when the same opponent opens the cutoff to 1600. The button calls, he has been playing pretty straightforward. So he's three betting when he has strong hands and just calling when he has medium-ish to low value hands. So I'm definitely really confident when I look down at pocket queens in the big blind. Obviously this is a sweet spot, but I need to decide what size to go. The button clearly has us covered with about 90K in his stack. From what I could tell, even though the cutoff is on the other side of the table, it looks like he has about 17 or 18K in front of him. So I make it 4K, which definitely too small. <laughs> I definitely should go bigger than this, but in the moment, that's what I decided. The cutoff now doesn't think too long before putting all the rest of his chips in, which to my surprise is more than I thought. It's 21,500 chips total. When the button folds though, obviously we're not going anywhere for 25 big blinds. So I stick in the call and we get the good news that we're up against pocket jacks. The run out is 10, 10, 9, 10 on the turn, 7 on the river. We do indeed hold and now all of a sudden we're up 50k. So with 75,000 chips in my stack, I've got almost double the average stack right now. Let's see if we can keep it up. Only 10 minutes after that, I opened pocket sixes in the hijack and the cutoff, who started this hand with less than 15 big blinds, makes the call. Big blind comes along as well. So three of us see the nine, six, four, two spade flop. That's right, we flop middle set. This has been the most epic level. Big blind checks it to me. I'm gonna see bet for 2200, which is 33%. And it's music to my ears when the cutoff calls. Big blind's out of there. And so we go heads up to the four of hearts turn. We've sealed the deal now. We cannot be scared of basically any river except a nine. So I'm gonna get a little sneaky with it and check it over to my opponent in the cutoff. He's not done with the hand. He goes all in for his remaining 7,000. We got him right where we want him. I flick in the call and when the cards are on their backs, we see he's got nine, seven of spades. So he had a ton of outs on that flop, but we sealed the deal on the turn. He can only hit a nine on the river and it comes the 10 of hearts. So we bust another player out of there back to back, hitting another boat all the way up 59,000 chips. And most of that has come in just 15 minutes. So I get to check in on what's going on with my friends in the meetup game on break when I get to see an all in between Ryan LaPlante, one of my friends and Andrew Nevy. There's a lot of these all ins happening against the ambassadors, by the way, because if you are all in and called, you don't have to win the pot, but if you're all in and called against an ambassador, you're automatically entered into a raffle that they're gonna draw from at the end of this meetup game. And four people in this room are gonna win $10,000 to play the WPT win championship main event. That's one of the reasons why there's a lot of electric energy in this room. My good friend, Pat has got multiple tickets already and look who's sitting behind him. Phil Ivey, no big deal. 
One hand that I didn't catch footage on, this lady that's been to my right, she opens to 2,500. I look down at ace queen offsuit in the hijack. This is hijack against low jack. I three bet to 7,500. She peels, the flop is jack seven three rainbow, and she leads into me for 7K. I've seen her lead a few times, so I can't really give her a strong hand when I've seen her lead quite a few times, especially on this board texture. I think she would just check to the three better if she had something really strong. So I float in position with my two overs. The turn is a king of diamonds. She checks now and I think she has about 32,000 left, something like that, maybe a little less. So about the size of the pot. So I just choose this moment to rip it all in after she leads small on the flop and then checks this turn. I don't think she has a super strong hand and she quickly lays it down. So I was really happy with that one. Yeah, things are going great so far. So I'm locked in. I've got dreams of bagging heaps in this tournament when I'm getting a little bit hungry. So I order some food and the only reason I mention that is because it actually comes up in this hand, believe it or not. I'm eating my food on the side when under the gun opens to 2,500. When it folds around to me, I'm in the small blind and look down at ace king offsuit. When I check out her stack, I realize she only has 5,500 behind. So <laughs> she's not deep at all. Maybe it looks a little bit like she's trapping with something big, but I've got ace king. Obviously we're not going anywhere. Now I just need to check out the big blind stack because I need to know if I should shove all in at this point, if, if he doesn't have that many blinds or if I need to three bet to a smaller size because we're deeper. Once I realize he's only got 41,000 in his stack, that's like 30 something big blinds, pretty simple all in situations. So I stick out 40,000 chips in the middle, big blind folds under the gun, snap calls all in. And I turn my hand over before everyone just says, no, 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 no. <laughs> and it's at that point that I realize that the low jack is also in the hand. While I was turned off to the side trying to eat my food, I didn't realize that he had called. So there's a third player in this hand, but I've already shown him my cards. Huge mistake because now he has perfect information. It's just about the math. I don't know what he has. Yeah, total screw up on my part. Huge mistake and I'm kicking myself. That's about the time where I pulled out my camera to start filming this hand. So that's this freeze frame. That's where we've been this whole time was after all of this happened, I pull out my camera to resume filming. I don't like to eat vlog and try to play poker at the same time. As you can see, I get a little bit distracted just with the two of those. So, ah, oh, so frustrating. The floor is called over to see if I deserve a penalty or not, etc. It's just a whole mess. But finally, the guy decides that his hand is good enough and he moves all of his chips in, he goes all in. So I flip my hand back over and the dealer's like, no, 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 you didn't even put enough to call his all in. So that's two mistakes I've made now, but it was only a thousand chips. The floor was like, that's fine. You obviously wanted to call the 1000 chips. So I flick it in and we get the bad news that the under the gun player has ace 10. So she's got one of our outs because low jack has pocket fives. So now we've got ourselves into a flip situation when we would have had ace king against ace 10 all in pre if I had noticed the low jack because I wouldn't have flipped my hand over and he definitely would have folded pocket fives to my shove. So really, really frustrating spot. The board runs out seven, four, four, two clubs giving the under the gun, the nut flush draw and a lot of equity against my ace king high. The turn is a jack of spades and the river is another jack, the jack of hearts. So instead of chopping it with the under the gun lady, now I lose 41 thousand chips and that little mistake of being slightly distracted cost me over half of the profit that I've made so far on this day. Ah, oh, so brutal, you guys. Most certainly won't be eating at the table in any future tournaments. On next break, there is a ton of commotion as the WPT helps Steve Aoki celebrate his birthday. Never thought I would see Steve Aoki and Doyle Brunson in the same room, by the way, but here we are. So instead of driving my way all the way to Punt City, I decided to take a breath and try to rely on a strong mental game to recoup and rebuild. In this hand, I've got King Nine of Clubs under the gun and I'm ready to start over. I open it up and both blinds come along. On the Ace Four Deuce Rainbow Flop, if we've got one club out there. I decide this is a great one to see bet three ways. So I put in a bet. Unfortunately, the small blind snap check raises to half my stack. Obviously, we're not calling this one. So now we've got to look for a better spot. So with the blinds going up and my stack going down, it's time for an all-in montage. 
The blinds are steadily increasing when I look down at pocket jacks with 11 and a half bigs. I shove this one all in, but unfortunately don't get any action. I peel a big blind and, and don't win that pot. So now I'm down to five bigs when I look down at pocket aces. Obviously we're going all in and nobody can afford five big blinds. So no action there either. Ace queen, same thing, no action. Another ace queen, same thing. And I look up at the clock and 98 people are left and 37 are gonna pay. So we are just hanging by a thread, trying to either continue to chip up or successfully get a double up. Next time I look down at a shovelable hand, I've got queen 10 suited, put that one in the middle. Again, no collars. All right, this one, we're gonna get a taker. I look down at queen nine suited on the button and put it in and I get snap called by ace king in the big blind. Oh man, the flop comes ace, jack, seven, all clubs. We don't have a club, this is not looking great. The turn is an eight, so we do have a little bit of hope. We could hit a 10 on the river, we can get a little sneaky. But unfortunately, the king is what comes instead. And you guys, we go from riding that high, up so many chips to kick off this thing, to out before the money after that huge mishap. Ah, oh, so disappointing. No! I was so close. I busted 40 people away or something like that. 50 people away for the money. Mm. Well, it was just day one and we had a lot of fun today. Can't wait to come back for another day one. This win series is gonna be epic, you guys. Hope that you can make it out. And if you do, you have as much fun as I had today. There was a ton of energy in that room today. There was cameras all around. The WPT and the win having a collaboration like this is so epic. It's everything I dreamed it would be the last two months. I was so looking forward to this series. And day one is off to a stellar start. I really cannot wait for the rest of this series. Gonna be some epic big tournaments, some huge first place prizes <laughs> coming up on the docket. So I'm going to just get mentally prepared have some food packed ahead of time all of that stuff so that i have consistent energy throughout the day we'll be back very soon see you guys in the next vlog bye next on the vlog jesse heads to la for some high stakes california action